All right, guys, welcome back. We are on Unit 2, the Industrial Revolution. Our topic for this video is going to be industrialization spreads. So in our last video, we talked about um, kind of some of the causes of the Industrial Revolution. We looked at why it began in Britain. They had a lot of natural resources. They had a stable government. They had entrepreneurs. They had capital to invest. They had a trade route. They had colonies. All these things kind of uh, came together to form the Industrial Revolution in Britain. We also went on to then look at transportation changes like the steamboat, the steam engine, the steam locomotive, and all that stuff. And now, in this video, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to begin to spread industrialization around the world. So to quickly uh, review what I just said, which country in Europe industrialized first? Well, we know it is Britain down here in the bottom. So let's spread it from Britain across Europe. So if Britain, or United Kingdom, is where the Industrial Revolution started, where would it go next? I mean, you can't keep something like the Industrial Revolution locked up in a country forever. It's going to eventually get out. Where would it go next? And the answer, believe it or not, is not, not an obvious one. It's not going to be France. It's not going to be Germany or Norway or somewhere close. It is close, but it's not the country you're expecting. It's this one right here. And I would be willing to bet a lot of us have no idea what this country is called. It is called Belgium. So Belgium is where the, the Industrial Revolution goes next after Britain. And one of the reasons it went there is actually some British uh, industrialists had moved to Belgium and kind of brought those ideas and technologies with them. So that's one of the reasons it spreads there first after Britain. So once it goes from uh, Britain to Belgium, industrialization begins to spread all across the continent. So factories start popping up in France and in Germany and Denmark and Italy and so forth. Now, you also have to think about why Britain would have been opposed to the spread of industrialization. And they're opposed to it because they had the advantage. When they were the only people with factories and railroads and such, they had a huge advantage over other countries. So they didn't want to see these ideas spread out for fear of losing their dominance. Nonetheless, uh, technology does spread out and you can see these lines. They represent railroad lines. Um, the green ones, kind of early ones, red being a little bit later. And you can see how all the big cities of Europe are connected together uh, via rails. Speaking of uh, European trains, here's one. Uh, I love this picture. This is from 1885 in Paris, capital of France. And that guy had a bad day. I think we can all agree. Someone got fired, I gotta imagine, from that picture. So if industrialization goes from Britain to Belgium and then across Europe, where would it go first outside of Europe? And the answer is the United States of America. So let's talk a little bit about American industrialization. So America's industrial story starts in the late 1700s in New England. Now, if you're not sure on your geography where New England is, guys, think places like Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, those areas up there. And that is where the textile industry is going to start producing lots and lots of goods. Remember, guys, textile industry, textiles are cloth products. And you can see some of that machinery there in a the factory in New England. Uh, these factories were powered by water power at first, as we talked about in our last video. Again, the waterfall turns the water wheel. The water wheel is connected via these belts to other wheels, and they all turn, powering the machines. Now, the, the city that we focus on when we're thinking about the early industrial workers, guys, is a place called Lowell, Lowell, Massachusetts. Now, let me go back to the map to show you. Lowell, you can see, is right here. It's kind of underneath this big circle right there. Lowell uh, did not even exist until the Industrial Revolution. It was basically a bunch of fields. And then a guy named Lowell opened up his first factory. More factories sprang up after that. And before you know it, it was basically a booming industrial town. And many of the workers in this mill were women, often young women, uh, from neighboring farm towns in New England. Uh, later, a lot of these girls will be replaced by young girls uh, from from Italy and other immigrant groups coming in from Europe. Now, let's think about America and our advantages 
they would that we would have in industrializing industrial <laughs> industrializing easy for me to say well if you remember back to the to the advantages britain had with natural resources and stable government and capital to invest and all that well america has all those things but even more okay we have tons of oil and coal and iron ore we have a growing population which gives us a lot of laborers but also a lot of consumers for goods we're going to build the most extensive railroad network anywhere in the world and we have some of the top inventors and entrepreneurs like this guy thomas edison to give you an idea just how quickly railroads were growing in america 1840 you can see just kind of a few uh, rail lines kind of here and there sparsely by 1890 50 years later I mean they're just everywhere so going back to the map guys you can see um, that the railroads often converge in certain places of course that would be a city like this is uh, Minneapolis for example this would be Memphis down here st. Louis right there so anytime you see a cluster of rails that's often a sign it's a major city and right here, you're going to notice a cluster, and that is Chicago. Chicago uh, served as kind of the focal point of the entire Midwest. Midwest is very uh, agriculturally active, lots and lots of farms. And so all the farm products would be shipped to Chicago to be processed in these factories and then shipped back out. And Chicago, for example, is famous for its stockyards. So going back to the map here, um, cattle that was raised kind of really basically anywhere in here would often be shipped via rail to Chicago to be processed and uh, you can see some some meat packers here 1905 working in a meat packing facility in Chicago so to review American industrialization began in the textile industry and New England was the region of the United States that industrialized first. America also had lots of advantages in industrialization, such as plentiful resources, a growing population, successful inventors and entrepreneurs. This will lead us into our next big topic, corporations. Now, the word corporation for most of us is probably a little hazy as to what exactly it is. I mean, I think most of us do realize their businesses, yes, but we're not sure exactly what makes a corporation a corporation. All these things down here are examples of corporations. So let's talk about what these things are and then why they're so important to the Industrial Revolution. To understand a corporation, you have to understand what stocks are. And stocks are, are basically um, partial ownership in a company so when you buy a stock in say Microsoft or uh, Nike or so other corporation you are buying partial ownership of that company and thousands and thousands and thousands of other people also own stock in that company so there is no single owner for any corporation rather there are many many owners who own little pieces of the company now, why is that such a big deal, and why would you even go through something like that? Well, a corporation, the reason they do this is by having lots and lots of people, we call stockholders or shareholders, by having all of these people own stock, what you're doing is you're pooling um, lots and lots and lots of money. So if you could get a thousand people to invest a thousand dollars, you would have a million dollars, right? Uh, and so if you can do this on a big scale, you can raise tons of money, which allows you then to open a business like opening a factory or uh, building a railroad or whatever it is. So these businesses require lots of money to get off the ground. That's how you do this. You get people to invest in your company by buying a small piece of your company, and then you can get the company off the ground. Now, corporations um, were very skilled at reducing the cost of producing goods, becoming ever more efficient. Because the more efficient you get, the less waste there is, the more profit you get. And the more profits you get, the more people want to invest in your companies, the more money you have to work with. So it's all kind of a cycle. If you are profitable, people want to buy into your company. And the way to become profitable is by reducing the cost of producing goods. 
All right, so a good example of one of these tycoons or entrepreneurs, or whatever you want to call them, that led one of these corporations would be this guy, John D. Rockefeller. His corporation was called Standard Oil, and it was by far the most powerful corporation in America in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And Rockefeller had such control over the economy that he became uh, very, very wealthy. He became a billionaire when millionaires were very, very rare. So he had just so much money. He's considered one of the richest people in all of history. So corporations are still very much with us, guys. In fact, I thought I would share just a couple of these with you. I don't have more updated numbers. I'm sorry. These are from 2017. But these corporations, guys, bring in a lot of money. So, for example, in 2017, Apple Corporation, uh, their revenue, that means how much money they brought in, was $229 billion. Toyota, in that same year, brought in $265 billion. Shell, gas station, of course, gas company, brought in $312 billion in 2017. Walmart brought in a whopping $500 billion. That is half a trillion dollars in revenue. Now, that does not mean profit, however. Revenue just means their sales. You would have to subtract from this number all of their what we call operating costs. That would be the cost to pay their employees, the cost to ship their goods, the cost they would have to pay suppliers that they buy goods from that they resell to us. So you would end up subtracting a very large number from this very large number, and that would be the profit. But nonetheless, lots of sales here, guys. That's what corporations do, is they have tons of money, and they operate on a massive scale. So that was it, guys, for our topic on industrialization spreads. And in our next video, we're going to look a little bit more about how uh, the Industrial Revolution affected society. So we're going to talk about common people, working class people, and see what their life was like.